Take good care of your teeth. This one's in bullet points, which I like. That's efficient. Take good care of your teeth. That's genius. Yeah. Just brush your teeth. Do and it. And floss. And like, if you get given a retainer, if you have braces and you get given a retainer, just wear the retainer. Welcome, everyone, to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I talk and talk and talk and don't stop, let it drop, throw that in a circle. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Everett's Master Baker, mythical soft boy, shareholder of a, a new startup company that I just heard about. It's called Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. It's supposed to be a really cool like pizza chain, so I'm really excited about that. Just want to let you all know. Um, yeah, and uh, today I'm talking to myself. Let's see what kind of eldritch horrors uh, I can conjure up inside my mind to then share with you, the listeners at home, or in your cars, or out at a park. Um, <laughs> you know, today, today I'm talking about uh, what advice we would give to our younger selves. I think it's a fun topic, thinking about, you know, you as a kid and, like, what advice you would give yourself. Um, so we're going to be getting into that. Uh, before we get into that, I was iced recently. Smear, or if you're not familiar, icing is something that you do with a Smirnoff ice. Okay, it's an alcoholic beverage. Um, really, uh, the kind of the a pioneer, I would say, for the likes of a Mike's Hard Lemonade or other sugary alcoholic spiked beverages. Uh, it's just like a fruity alcoholic drink, and it's fine. Smirnoff is fine. It's a fine drink. But there's this stupid thing called icing. I don't disagree. know. Disagree. I don't know where it started. Jamie disagrees. I don't know where it started. I don't know who started. But like the whole idea is that you hide a Smirnoff ice somewhere, and if somebody finds it, they have to then get down on one knee and chug the Smirnoff ice, and it just like ruins. It's so dumb. Why? It ruins the drink. It's like it's a fine drink if you just sip on it like you would any other drink. But when you just ingest that much like alcoholic sugar into your stomach in such a short amount of time, it just makes you feel sick. And now everyone hates Smirnoff ice because of it. And I want to know who started it. And also there's like, you they like, can't say no. It's like, it's so- It's peer pressure at its finest. It is peer pressure at its finest. And you can't say no. And and I, I don't understand. And so uh, according to- <laughs> Did you just look up facts about sort of the history of Smirnoff ice and icing? Yes. Okay. Uh, so Smirnoff icing first took place at the College of Charleston in South Carolina. A group of brothers of the Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity emailed the game's instructions to BroBible.com, a website dedicated to fraternity culture, according to The Takeout. Uh, uh, <laughs> then they launched their own domain, BrosIcingBros.com, which was essentially a photo and video gallery of, you guessed it, bros icing bros. It, it, it doesn't surprise me that it's a frat thing. And I remember the website Bro Bible from like when I was a middle schooler. And that was like a big thing to be like, oh, you got to follow the bro code and like bros being bros and, you know, bros before. It's weird. Icing is stupid. But also, I think it's stupid, and yet I still follow the rules for some reason. Well, because... I can't I, say no to it. You you kind of can't. You can. But it is one of those things where you just... If you didn't do it, you would be like... Feel weird about yourself, even though you're like, it's the dumbest thing. <laughs> I'd be like, I should have just done it. I feel like I've always said, no one's ever tried to ice me. Don't get any ideas. Uh... What do you mean, don't get any ideas? Obviously, I'm going to ice you now. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Don't. <laughs> Unrelated I'm gonna say, question, I'm gonna say what's no. your home address? <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to mail me one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Joke's on you because I check my mailbox like once every three weeks. You know what, uh, what advice I would give my younger self is just if anybody tries to ice you, just don't do it. What are they going to do? Yeah. Thanks. Now they have to drink the stupid. Yeah, now they or just sip on it. Just be like, "Thanks for the Smirnoff. It's a nice beverage that I'm going to enjoy responsibly." And that's that's how you show them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just I haven't I have not bought a Smirnoff ice in I God knows how long. Can you ice yourself? I mean, yeah. If you hide one, maybe you're maybe drunk. You, you know, get some ices. 
hides them all around your apartment, and then you forget, sober you, happens upon one, and then you have to be like, darn it, drunk Trevor. <laughs> I want to know what the rules are, though. Like, if like if my roommate bought a six-pack of Smirnoffs and put them in the fridge, if I just open up the fridge, do I then have to chug a Smirnoff? Does that count? Does it count? I need to know the rules. Go to bro Bible. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. I'd I'm not. I'd rather just talk about it. Anyways, advi- <laughs> the advice is don't do that to people. Um, that's the <laughs> advice. Uh, no, we're, we're going to talk today about what kind of advice we would give our younger selves. What would you have wanted to know when you were younger that you know now? Um, I don't know. This is, a, this is a weird this is a weird topic because I feel like I'm I'm kind of like agnostic about the idea of giving my younger self advice. Mm-hmm. I, uh, well, I tweeted out uh, asking you all, the people, the listeners to, or just people that follow me on Twitter, I guess not everyone that follows me on Twitter listens to the show, but um, I asked people to tell me what kind of advice they would give their younger selves. And I know that there's a lot of people that like really believe that like, oh, if I could go back and change this thing in my life, or like I have like this this big regret and like I wish I could change that. And like, I understand that, but I mean, I have those things in my life when I was younger, like when I did stupid stuff or let myself uh, be in situations. But I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say whether or not I would change it if I could, or if I could go back in time and give my younger self advice if I would tell them to avoid it. Mm. Because I, I feel like personally, I mean, I can point to the things in my life that have kind of shaped who I am now. And while I am unwell, <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I, I generally feel like I'm in a pretty good place. And I know that like I am the way I am now, like the positive qualities that I have, I have because of the things that I went through when I was younger. So it's always an interesting question when I think about it. Like what actually would I say if I had the opportunity to say something to my younger self, what would I actually say? Because I yeah. don't think I would give myself specifics. And I don't, I don't know that I would really have much to say. It would probably be pretty like... Uh, Probably pretty useless advice. Or like even vague. Vague. Also, would your younger self even listen to older you if you could do that? You know, I actually, um, I thought about this recently. I don't know why. I think I was just like laying in bed and being kind of existential. But I had this thought like in my head. I was like, if, uh, if my younger self, like if I was in middle school and I met myself now... And this sounds like such a like humongous like ego, like this sounds like so conceited, but like I genuinely feel like younger me would think me now is like super cool. Yeah. <laughs> like I think the That's younger good. version of myself, like when I was in middle school, I think he would be like, holy crap, like you're so cool. And that is just such a stupid thing, but it did make me feel better. I was like, That's good. Younger <laughs> me would like really be proud of me and think I was really cool and probably would want to be friends with me and want to hang out with me. <laughs> Um, not that I would want to hang out with younger me because I was a dope. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was going to say, I was like, I've talked about this recently. I was like, I think I would not like to hang out with my younger self as much. Maybe I wouldn't want to go drinking with her. Mm-hmm. I would want to stay, like, I would hang out with her on the couch. Let's watch some TV. Maybe go to get a, a, a nice coffee drink. That's about that's about all. <laughs> me drinking with my younger self is just me drinking with me from two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was literally talking this is to like basically the same person. <laughs> no. Uh like drinking with my twenty one year old self would be atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean I, I feel like younger me would be pretty proud of me right now. But like I don't know. I would definitely give him advice. I replied to my own tweet. When I asked people what advice they would give to their younger selves, I replied to myself with a very sound piece of advice, to be clear. Yeah. Which is that you should save, if you're ever playing Pokemon Diamond or Pearl or Platinum or Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl, the remakes, don't use the Master Ball on Dialga or Palkia. Don't do it, okay? Because you can catch Dialga or Palkia with a Great Ball or an Ultra Ball. You don't need to use the Master Ball. You need to save the Master Ball for Mesprit because Mesprit freaking runs away and you have to chase that dumb little pink idiot across the map. And the first move, Mesprit always flees. So you have to have a Pokemon with a a, a trap move 
like uh like something that like prevents them from fleeing or an ability but it's so annoying and so just save the master ball for mesprit because you get it first try and then you have all three of those little fairy pokemon and you can complete your pokedex anyway um that is genuine advice that i would give my younger self that's advice that i'd give myself a year ago when brilliant diamond came out or whatever i don't think it's a year old but it might be when brilliant diamond came out because i did the same dumb thing that i did when i was a kid i didn't learn I had to look up what that Pokemon was. It's a it's an irrelevant story unless you play Pokemon. It's pretty dumb, but I'm Pokemon ne- players yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm Pokemon sure. players get it, right? Uh, <laughs> real gamers get it. Um, no, I, it's hard to think about what advice I would give to my younger self. Do you feel like maybe the advice you could give your younger self? Like, if you were, like, on a trip, it was like, you're like, you have to. You have to go back and tell yourself something that it would be maybe just permission to feel a certain way or, yeah. like, act a certain way. I don't know. Um, I think that I would, I would tell myself that, like, and this is something that I noticed in a lot of the tweet replies is just, like, people just want to tell their younger selves that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Like, I remember, and, you know, it depends on how young. Like, if I was talking to my eight-year-old self, I wouldn't tell them that everything is going to be okay because when I was eight, I knew everything was going to be okay. Yeah, I wasn't worried. If I I was talking to myself, and I I didn't have a care in the world, but if I was talking to myself, like, in high school, I'd be like, look, like, it's all going to be okay. I think a a genuine piece of advice that I would want to give myself, I think, is to not be as self-conscious, especially Mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, choir and theater. Because that was one of the things mm-hmm. in high school that, like, I don't think I ever really let myself get super into mm-hmm. or really express myself fully because I was always self-conscious about how it would come across, like, or I didn't think that I was good enough when if I had just, like, gone all out, it would have been great. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I would tell myself that it's all going to be okay. I, but, like, I mean, these situations, you know, that I went through, you know, when I was younger and, like, my later high school years – I don't think I could tell my younger self to avoid them, though. I think that that yeah. would be, I I think that it's necessary to go through some of those tougher situations. Um, I would definitely tell myself to get therapy faster. I'd be like, mm-hmm. look, mm-hmm. just go get therapy, get medicated, fix the chemical imbalance in your brain, and just be generally happier because of it. <laughs> um I don't know. I probably, there's probably like certain, certain things I would tell them to avoid that were like sort of minor, minor mistakes, not major mistakes, you know? Yeah. Or like major formative things. Cause I think a lot of the like major things that I went through, while sometimes they did suck, it was like they did really help me grow and become a better person. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to not have that, you know? I don't think that I would have grown up in the ways that I needed to without some of those like, more uncomfortable and unfortunate situations. 100%. Um, but there's definitely some smaller mistakes. It was like, I, I didn't really get a lot from it, and I just would rather it, it have had not happened. Yep. Um, I definitely would have told myself to be kinder to my mom because yeah. I was a little brat in high school. Yeah. I thought I knew better, even though I do agree with a lot of the things that my younger self felt. I could have definitely said them so much more differently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it would have been better. Um, and I also would, there was, I did go through a small phase of time because I grew up very like, um, like tomboyish. And so yeah. I went through a small phase of like, I'm not like other girls. And I hate that now. Yeah. Like when people, like the pick me girls, like I just don't like that mentality now. So I might tell myself, I'm like, other girls are really cool. Yeah. So you can be like that. That's dope. <laughs> um, I definitely would have told myself to not sleep through basketball practice um, like my senior year the day or two before the final game. I was... <laughs> I was v- <laughs> Why did you do that? Okay, I was violently depressed. And also basketball was a very sore spot for me because I had an unfortunate situation with a coach. Yeah. And he... I hope he doesn't listen to this. I don't think he would. Well, you're jerk, Mr. Coach Guy. You no, know. I I, Just kidding. I don't know. What there he was did. an unfortunate situation. No, you know what? Why am I beating around the bush? He said some seriously <laughs> things about me. 
Really? Yeah, he was like a bully. He bullied me. Like he would literally like make fun of me in practice, like to everyone else on the team and like make jokes at my expense. And at like our end of the year basketball banquet, he like brought me up and it mm. I, don't know. I don't know why I always get so <laughs> fired up when I talk about this because it's it doesn't matter. Well, because he shouldn't have been doing that. No. The, the, so we were at the end of our year, like end of year basketball banquet. Season's yeah. over. We just kind of all get together, whatever, present awards, talk about achievements, accomplishments. He brought me up on stage in front of all of our basketball teams and all of their families and said, you wouldn't tell by how he played or his stats, but Trevor really had a big impact on the team this year. And then he also called me repulsive. What? Because I wore a fanny pack to this thing. Because I was a kid and I liked fanny packs. And you were being still smart. Do. And it's fanny a packs. smart way of carrying your belongings. It is. And then he was like, you know, I don't think I've ever seen anyone wear a fanny pack to one of these things. And like when I was walking up and I was just like, okay. And then... <laughs> He, he, this so, is what he said verbatim. So rude. It's like he, this is what he said verbatim. The, the next part after that, he was like, you know, Trevor, you're somehow so magnetic and also so repulsive at the same time. And I was like, who says that? Who says something like that? What the? F anyway, this is a tangent, but I had to preface this to say that during this time, he stole a lot of joy from playing the game of basketball for me. He yeah. made the game of basketball not fun to play. Um, and when I, we had morning practices at like five in the morning every day and I was violently depressed and not getting enough sleep and I just slept through practice like the day before a, like a district tournament game or something. And then he up, ended up benching me and not, well, he didn't, he didn't fully bench me. I just didn't start that game. Um, and I remember being upset about it, but I get it. I understand why he would not yeah. start me because I slept through practice. Um, I probably would have just told myself like, don't sleep through practice. Just like get up and go. And then like, don't like leave with that sour of a taste in your mouth from like, you know, your like last high school basketball game because we lost because he's a terrible coach. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't get what he was trying to do. Was he trying, first of all, I hate backhanded compliments i hate them yeah! they're so stupid and i only ever use them to be blatantly obvious if i feel like someone else is being like is is sliding someone yeah. i don't know why i take it upon myself when i see other people being bullies or doing things like that like i need to yeah take care of it i don't yeah. know why and i don't just call them out like you're rude i mean i do but i just yeah. basically i'm like no i'm gonna be a bully to you now yeah I, um, my friends and I, we have an inside joke where, like, every once in a while we'll just start saying, like, listing off a bunch of, like, blatantly back end compliments, like, as a joke that we do, <laughs> and we see who can come up with, like, the funniest one. We'll just be, like, playing video games together, and we'll be like, <laughs> wait, what are some of the good ones? What are some of the good ones? Um, oh, this is my favorite one. I'll just be, like, I'll, like, be talking to my friend, I'll be like, you know, I don't care what everyone says about you. I think you're a pretty cool guy. <laughs> That's my favorite one. <laughs> I don't care. Or just like, you know, I, I just love the way you dress. Like, it's so brave. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I had a friend once. Yeah. And I, because, uh, you know, I wear a lot of patterned leggings. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I just like patterns. And I remember this one time I was wearing, like, a pair of, like, it was, like, a white plain shirt. And, like, I have these, like, jungle-looking leggings. And my friend's, like, Oh, you're matching today. And I was like, what do you, do I not, do I not match typically? And she was just like, oh no, like you totally pull it off. <laughs> and I was like, what the f <laughs> I was no, like, that's screwed she, up. Yeah. That's screwed up. That's I a mean, menace move. <laughs> like stuff like that. Like that's so mean. He called me repulsive. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I wanna read some tweets of people. Yes. Um, there are some really good ones. Okay, this is Michaela. You, uh, if you watch a lot of Good Mythical Morning, you've probably seen Michaela before. Very sweet coworker. Mm -hmm. She's a lovely person. She said, do not be scared to look silly. If you don't look silly, you're preventing yourself from having real fun and enjoying being young. Being silly will get you much farther in life than you can imagine. That's true. That is I true. I definitely, there were times in my life when I like, it's funny because when you're like a younger kid, like, when I was in middle school, 
I would say that everything that I did in middle school to try and be cooler actually made me look a lot stupider. Mm -hmm. Like every attempt that I made to be cooler, quote unquote, probably just worked in the opposite, in the reverse. Because everybody's dumb in middle school. There's no cool middle schoolers. No. If you're a middle schooler, I hate to break it to you, but you're kind of cringe. It's just, that's just what it is. Yep. There's no cool middle schoolers. Yep. Everyone's lame. There's barely any cool high schoolers. There's no cool people. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I get it. Because when you're younger, that's all you know. All you know is this this small community that has been created be, by the proximity of where you live to this school most of the time. Yeah. Um. I. You know what I didn't get about like school, and even now sometimes is like the harder you try, the dumber you look. Which I think yeah. there is some truth to that, but also it's okay to look dumb. Yeah, that was good, Michaela. That's good advice. I like um, it. Nausea from Sport said, I stand by never keeping a diary because that is how they get you. Um, that's good advice. It is. Honestly, I am you know I know a lot of people say you should journal, write down your feelings and thoughts, but I feel like a lot of, of, of stories that end terribly start with someone reading someone else's journal. So if you're going to keep a diary, hide it well and lock it. Yeah, like lock it up for lock sure. Lock it up because <laughs> that is how they get you. Plus, if you're engaging in nefarious activities, don't write it in your diary because, again, that's how they get you. Yeah, I would. And to counter that point, though, someone else tweeted, um, Allie, keep your dumb old photos, screenshots and journals. I sort of did this, but I wish I had more because and that's it's near the end of the page. Oh, um, yeah. Because Allie. Yeah. I know Allie, my friend. Oh, nice. Because yeah. I liked that because if you did keep journals, I had a bunch of different journals, especially one was just like, this is what I was like, I'm going to keep track of what I did every day this summer. And I don't have any of those. And it would just be nice because in my head, I was like, I'm going to remember all this stuff. I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything. But I don't think I want to. I don't know. I, I, journals are weird for me because I feel like every time I write something down and I am someone that likes to write when I'm feeling very emotional, it's like kind of cathartic for me to just start scribbling words on a page and just like kind of spew whatever emotions I'm feeling. Um, and usually it's not like, I don't know, I don't journal in the way that like I write down what happened during the day or like this happened, then this happened. And I talked to this person when I like journal quote unquote, it's like I'm using writing as like a vessel to express emotions that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And I usually do that by like writing stories, um, that like express that in a way. Um, but every time when I'm writing it, I'm like, this is good stuff. Like you're a genius, Trevor. This is such. A, this is so emotional and deep. And then if I, I can't reread it because every time I read it, I'm like, God, you're the worst. You're so cringe. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, so I don't like to reread things. But that is a good. That's good advice from Allie because I look back very fondly on all of the old pictures and stupid things um, of my friends and stuff that like we did. Like definitely in the world of iPhones. And having 256 gigabytes of storage on the little computer in your pocket, take a bunch of pictures. It's fun. It's fun to just scroll back through and remember stuff. Like, especially if you're like yeah. me and you have a terrible memory, it's really easy to remember something if you have a picture of it. So this is a good one. Um, Ken likes board games <laughs> at No Way Jose 1979. Do you I think 1979 is the year um, that Ken likes board games was born? I would want to say yes. <clears throat> okay. Wow. Or he had an or he had an incident with someone named Jose. Yeah, could be. Um take good care of your teeth. This one's in bullet points, which I like. That's efficient. Take good care of your teeth. That's genius. Yeah. Just brush your teeth Do and it. floss. And like if you get given a retainer, if you have braces and you get given a retainer, just wear the retainer. Like going to the dentist sucks, but it's so much easier if you just go to the dentist every year and all they do is like, oh, you're doing great. You just need a yep. good regular checkup teeth cleaning and they clean your teeth. But when you go to the dentist and they're like, yeah, you got seven cavities. Eh, it's just the worst. Just brush your teeth. It's a good, it's a good idea. Brush them good. Yeah. Um, injuries that heal now will come back in your 30s and hurt forever. I don't, I, I don't understand how that's a good piece of advice. Uh, because, and I will tell you, because I'm dumb. Yeah. Uh, and there were times where I injured myself or like I was in a car accident and I should have gone to physical therapy. Oh, yeah. And I did not 
do that. And now I and they, everyone told me you should do it because it's going to hurt later. And now I have random times when my back just. Yeah. Up. And it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Go to if you get hurt, like doing something like I have a I have a friend, my friend Nick, he like he's telling me about how he like like broke his hand like twice and just like didn't do anything about like didn't go to the doctor, or get it fixed. And now his hand just like hurts all the time. Like if you get if you like hurt yourself and it like hurts pretty bad. If you if you have the means, you know, just get it, just get it looked at, you yeah. know, just get it checked out. Do whatever you got to do because it will. Uh, nobody ever says, I wish I was at work more on their deathbed. That's true. But also we live in a late stage capitalist society. So you need money to survive. Nothing you can do about that one. You got to go to work. Unless you're rich, then don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know that you need that advice, though. <laughs> Um, occasionally you need to be impulsive. That's where the fun happens, but generally stability is good. I like that. Yeah. I think that it is important to, you know, take kind of quote unquote risks, be impulsive. You know, if your friends ask you out, you know, like random last minute plans, like go do that stuff. It's really fun. And like, there's been a lot of times in my life when I, I think that I need to plan something and prepare for something. Like I'm very much an introvert. And so I like to have my alone time to recharge. And there's definitely times when I'm like, if, I, I don't want to do something impulsive, but almost nine times out of 10, if I am like feeling like I don't want to go out and then my friends are like, come on, just come out. It'll be fun. And it's like a last minute thing. I usually end up having a really good time. Same. And so it's like, you know, just go out, be impulsive, but also stability is good. Yeah. Like don't uproot your entire life on an impulsive decision. Just like, you know, go out to a bar with your friends and get, you know, responsibly drunk impulsively that's a fun thing that is a fun thing um this one's good though Haley at uh Og Ogja. i don't know how to say it. i'm really sorry Haley. um learn to say no it does not make you a bad person you are what's most important in your life and everyone else can just deal that's very true it yeah. it's it can be really hard to say no sometimes but above all else you have to look out for your own health and mental health as a priority and you should never sacrifice that like for someone else. And it sucks because there have been a lot of times in my life when I've wanted to do that and when I have done it, but it, it does hurt and it's not good for you. And you can only put others before yourself so much. I think it's good to be a selfless person. I think it's good to be, you know, care about the needs of others. But when it comes to a baseline, if there's something that is like seriously jeopardizing your own mental health and health in general, say no. Like it's not, it doesn't, it, it really doesn't make you a bad person. It, it, you're not in the wrong and you, you do have to look out for yourself. And um, no is a complete sentence too. Not everything needs a justification. Yes. Very true. Great point, Jamie. I, cause I've learned like, I'm like, I'm always bringing like not excuses, but reasons for things. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I, you know, no, just no. Yeah. Don't feel like it. Totally. I, I'm <laughs> definitely someone that feels like I need to have a justification for like saying no to something or like have a reason um, and feel bad. But no can be no. And they should respect that. And if they don't respect that, then that's on them. And they need to deal with that. But like sometimes the answer is just no. Mm -hmm. Nope. Not going to do it. Just like I'm not going to do the rest of this podcast, Jamie. Nope. Goodbye. Jamie just did a gym <laughs> face into the camera. <laughs> oh, this is a banger. This is a banger. Jay, Jay, this is a good, this is great advice. And it's a piece of advice that I will continue to never listen to. Don't hoard your items in video games. You'll just <laughs> never use them that way. That time you might need it is now. Use it. If you were a gamer, <laughs> if you play RPGs, you have been in the position where you have an item or a weapon or so, especially if it's a game with like degrading mechanics where you're like, <laughs> I got to save this because eventually I'm going to get to a really crazy fight and I'm going to need it and I have to save this. You're never going to use it. You're going to get all the way through the final boss and you're never going to use it and you should just use it now. You just got to you just got to have fun with what you have now in video games. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. This. Great advice. Jay, Jay Fitz. Great <laughs> advice. I knew you were going to like that one. Um, next up is one from the Verified Smosh Twitter account. This one's kind of silly. Um, they said, don't let a ghost be your roommate. Um, Smosh, if you're out there listening, uh, this is something that I don't think you really have a choice in. I don't think ghosts being your roommate is generally something that is invited. It's not like, oh, I'm going to invite the ghost. Usually it just happens uh, outside your control. Um, so I don't know that that's a good piece of advice. Also, um, 
I don't know that it's something that you would necessarily, if you had one chance to tell your younger self something, I don't think that's the advice you should go with. That one's a bit of a miss, um, verified Smosh Twitter account, but good try. Thank you for contributing. Um, and I also just don't think that's good advice in general because what if the ghost is like really chill? You know, what if they're like a chill ghost? Could be fun. It could um, be fun. Yeah. So pretty bad advice from Smosh, <laughs> which is a first. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one's good. This one's good. Evil Black Cat said, I would tell myself not to be afraid of failure. You don't have to do everything perfect the first time. And if you mess up, try again and you can get better. Learn from your mistakes. No one thinks less of you for not being perfect. And if they do, well, screw them. Um, mm -hmm. this is true. Nobody is perfect at like the first time they do something. And oftentimes as a former, um, perfectionist, not former, I don't know. I get scared. Like when I want to do something, Same. like I'll try it. And if I'm not super good at it and it goes for like everything. I mean, for me, a lot of the time it's like learning an instrument. Like every time I try to like get better in an instrument, it's, you know, things take time to get good at skills, take time to learn. And if you're not perfect at it the first time, the amount of the amount of times it took me to freaking bake a nice looking cake, like in culinary school and figure out how to like evenly frost a cake. Like now I can do it, but it was hard when I first tried. And and you learn from your mistakes and you shouldn't be afraid of failure. And a lot of times that fear of failure is like something that prevents you from doing it. Um, don't let that happen. Don't if you're not perfect at something, if you're not great at something the first time you try it, don't let that be a reason that like you shouldn't do it or let that fear of failure prevent you from trying something new. Um, because a lot of times it does, and that sucks because, you know, you should do what you want to do and do what you love and, you know, give it the time and practice it it needs. Um, I agree. I mm. need to take that more now than I did before, I feel like. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't know why I'm just like, why am I not just good at it? Yeah, it's hard. And here's the thing. The hardest part is that I'm a huge narcissist, so I think I'm great at everything. And then when I'm not, I'm like... <laughs> What the heck? How am I not perfect at everything? Um, <laughs> kidding. Kind of. Um, Ghostly Toast said, if I'm being serious, when you get your first job, start putting money into savings. Future me would have loved past me for doing that. Yes. Very true. Uh, if you are able to set aside money um, out of your paycheck, even if it's just like a little bit at a time, like, it happens. Your yep. car breaks down, you need a, re a new transmission, or you, you pass out in the Boise airport, flying home from visiting your family and end up going to the emergency room because you're dehydrated and heat exhausted, and then you have an emergency room medical bill that plops into your mail from the St. Luke's in Boise. Um, this is just a pretty general, like, uh, vague story that I'm telling. Totally not something that happened to me personally. No. Stuff happens, and if you have money in your savings, it just makes your life a lot less stressful if you, if you can, you know, it's like the emergency, you know, it's the rainy day emergency fund, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's just good to have money that if something crazy happens, if something bad happens, um, you know, you're not completely screwed. Um, you witness a crime and you need to go on the run, what? start anew. Jamie, that's not good advice. If you witness a crime, why would you have to go on the run? Why not just tell the authorities? Because it was organized crime, and they're all up in that. Oh, organized crime. The mob boss is going to s slit your belly open if you tell the police. You got to get out of town. You got to get out of town. Um, <laughs> no, don't take that advice. I mean, I guess unless that happens to you. <laughs> oh, this one I like. This is from Angel Moinin. 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 Mo Moinin. Uh, enjoy the freedom of not being an adult. The pros of being an adult are sometimes just as even as the cons. I do wish I valued the time I didn't have to pay bills a little bit more. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, I definitely feel that. Like, yeah, just enjoy. I mean, I think about when I was in high school and like I didn't have a job. I was just playing sports and doing extracurriculars and I, you know, could spend... You know, I, I just had a debit card that, like, had money in it magically somehow. And, like, I didn't have, like, bills to pay. And, like, I could just, like, do fun stuff. The sad part is that I pretty much started paying bills and living semi-independently at, like, 17. Yeah. Which was unfortunate. Um, but, like, if you're going to college and you don't and, you're, and your parents are, like, paying or whatever or you don't have a job, like, if you're in that situation, enjoy it. 
Yeah. Because then you get to the real world where you have to have a job and pay bills. Or even just like, just like before I paid rent, like- when I was 23, see, you're way different at 23 than I was at 23. <laughs> I was living at home. I'm pretty advanced. I was paying, like, you know, my car and my car insurance stuff. I wasn't paying rent, and I didn't have to yeah. buy groceries. And I was living life. Yeah. The dream. The dream. I love it. <laughs> This one's good from sitting with you. The amount of people you think are looking at you right now is 82% less than you think. Yes. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> I mean, genuinely. Think about all the times that you're like out in public and like how much you're not paying attention to everyone around you. Never. Not never. No, yeah. Like not. I mean, obviously, you know, you're like walking through the mall, you glance, but you're never like focused in on someone. Like the <laughs> social anxiety and like feeling like everyone is looking at you and judging you. It's just really not true. I mean, I don't know. Unless you're like really like egregiously standing out like but that's usually because of something that you chose to do yeah but if you're just like doing normal people things and like being a normal person people aren't gonna like pay attention to you they'll see you in passing and you won't occupy their head for more than a half a second yeah so just doesn't matter people don't really care people are egotistical you i am I believe that everyone is, or I have this thing that, like, I believe that everyone is paying attention to me, or, like, I think that everyone's looking at me and judging me, which is, like, a very ego maniacal thing to do, where it's, like, I am so important that everyone's looking at me. I am not really that important. I don't think people are actually looking at me that much. And I, I've definitely grown out of that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. I don't get as nervous or anxious anymore. I've, like, definitely grown out of that. Um, but, yeah, it's just, like, nah, just just do your thing. Live your life. People aren't really, people don't care that much. People, are, really people are in the mall to go get a freaking Wetzel's pretzel and shop at Hot Topic not to look at you. <laughs> yeah, like like you, like you said, unless you're being a spectacle. Yeah, unless you're being a spectacle. This one's good. Kat Dobrowski said, don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't go to advice for. That right there would have saved me so much anxiety growing up. I That's such good advice. That's a really good piece of advice, genuinely. Like, there's a lot of people in my life that I trust to give me advice and people that I would go to to ask for help or or something or, like, advice about something. But, like, those people, I would, you know, I would take criticism from. If, like, if my dad told mm -hmm. me, hey, dude, like, what are you doing? You know, clean, clean up your act. I'd be like, okay, dad. But if some rando that I would like never ask for advice from or don't trust as someone to like give me guidance, like started criticizing me, who cares? I don't care. Why would I? I don't care about your positive opinion. Why would I care about your negative opinion? Yeah. <laughs> like a hundred percent. Um, This is good. Don't download Twitter for the love of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. Please don't download Twitter. It is a cesspool of negativity and stupidity. And there, there, there's some funny jokes on there. <laughs> Twitter can be funny sometimes, but it's not worth it. It's not worth the mental trauma. A lot of people um, talked about Bitcoin, get in on Bitcoin early. That's interesting if I... But also, like, this is when you get in on it, and then this is when you should sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he's <laughs> not doing too great. I, um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to end up in a Back to the Future 2 situation, you know? Where I, you know, give my younger self a financial advice oh, on no, something. Oh, no, I definitely would. And then ruin the world because of it. I mean, who knows? I don't know how, I don't know how giving advice to your past you self works, but who knows? You Maybe, don't have Biff energy, though. I don't have Biff energy. Thank you, because Biff is a D-bag. He is, exactly. <laughs> Make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> um... No, I mean, I, generally across all the tweets, I noticed a lot of people are saying just like, be yourself. Yep. Like, don't worry about what other people think of you. Generally, really good advice, you know? Be who you are. Be true to yourself. Express yourself in the way that you want to. Wear the clothes you want to. Do the things you want to. Sing the songs you want to. Um, I mean, it's really just like, you know, live your life in the way that makes you the happiest and don't worry about what other people think. Um, a lot of people talked about Bitcoin. If you could give your younger self financial advice on how to get rich, do it. Capitalism sucks, okay? Um, in the 60s, they decided, the U.S. government decided that spending on defense 
uh, and making a few people in the aerospace community and, and development industry really rich was the most important thing. And now they're just going to keep getting rich and keep getting richer and richer. If you have the chance to go back in time and give your younger self advice on how to get super rich, do it. Don't pass up that opportunity. I would say moderately rich. Moderately rich? What is moderately rich? Like you don't need a hundred billion dollars, but maybe like no, maybe like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, Mod- rich enough. A hundred million dollars is a f- ton of money. I know, I know <laughs> it is, but you can still like donate that and like invest and make a charity or something. You could yeah. do that if you have a billion dollars, but you might not because you'll probably be greedy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Do the things that make you happy. Yeah, be yourself. That's that's the advice I would give my younger self. Do the things that make you happy. Don't spend too much time doing the things that don't make you happy unless it's like really like, I don't know, going to math class didn't make me happy, but it's necessary. Yeah. It's like do that, but then like, you know, make sure you make the time for things that do make you happy and be kind to the people that love you and care about you. Um, I was very to some people in my life. Um, Thankfully, people that, you know, I'm still very close friends with and they stuck with me through it when I was really depressed and didn't know how to handle my emotions, um, be kind to the people that love you and care about you and be grateful for them and make sure that they know that. And, um, you know, show them the same love that they show you. Um, And cut some people off that don't serve you. Yeah. If someone is not enriching your life and they're like a leech and they are leeching your happiness, there's no reason to keep them around. Nine times out of ten, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is that enough advice? That's a lots of advice. Do you, think, do you think that I've made people's lives better today? I think you've enriched them yourself. I've enriched them? If they, I could give them advice, I I'd be like, haven't. go back uh, to the first day that this podcast came out and tell everyone you know about it. I would go back and I would save my younger self from every single time I got scammed in RuneScape. <laughs> It's coming full circle, baby. Okay. Don't follow that guy into the wilderness with all with your entire bank on you because he's promising you that you're going to be in a YouTube. I was dumb. I was like nine. I was stupid. Okay. The, 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 the freaking, the, the skull tricker. I don't lose your tacits. Okay. <laughs> the time I got skull tricked, that was so preventable. Just teleport out. They didn't teleblock you, Trevor. Just teleport out. It's so simple. Don't get scammed. I'm done. Jamie, are you ready for a useless fact of the week? Always. Useless fact of the week. Here it is. This probably won't affect any of your lives. Maybe it will. But you are not allowed to bring a Furby to the Pentagon. Furbies are banned from the Pentagon because the Pentagon hates fun. No. <laughs> I um, mean. <laughs> you, I, who knows? Maybe you think that Furbies are adorable. Maybe you think they're creepy. I'm probably in the latter category. Um, but one thing for sure is that the American government doesn't trust them. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you have ever encountered the conspiracy theories about satanic Furbies or possessed Furbies, demonic Furbies, uh, a thing that Furbies do is speech imitation. Um, mm-hmm. That is like a part of their technology, their features. They imitate speech. Um, and so I guess it makes sense that people, you know, communicating classified information on a regular basis in the Pentagon wouldn't want a rogue Furby to get in there and steal their secrets. And then uh, fly yeah. away using its demon wings and give that information to the wrong people. Um, I, for one, would love to see a Furby as president. Um, I think that that would be fun. Uh, but then you have the Furby paradox. Yeah. Because Furbies can't enter the Pentagon. But sometimes a president needs to enter the Pentagon. So therefore, a Furby cannot be president. That's not a paradox. That's just an unfortunate situation. <laughs> unfortunate reality. <laughs> One of the realities that we sadly I mean, they have a small point, I guess. All right, everyone. If you eat food, which I'm sure many of you do, uh, then you need to go check out Spork.com. I'm sure you've heard about it, but if you haven't, Spork.com is a website that we launched over here at Mythical um, that is doing all sorts of stuff food-related, specifically with product rankings, best of the best, new products, stuff like that. They're just tasting a bunch of food. They're going down every grocery aisle, testing products against each other, finding out what you should buy, finding out what you shouldn't buy. Um, and it's really fun. Everyone over at Sporked is lovely. Uh, they're my friends. They're really cool. Um, and they also have members of the Mythical crew over to do taste tests all the time. So, you know, they're, they're really, they're doing their due diligence over there. They're researching. They're finding what's best. 
and they're putting it all in, in handy articles for you to read and then figure out what you want to buy. Um, and it's all sorts of foods. Um, so please go check out spork.com uh, to get all of that fun article information lists about what foods you should buy, what foods you shouldn't buy. And also you can check out some of the taste tests and behind the scenes stuff over on their socials um, on TikTok and Instagram at Sporked. That's S-P-O. R K E D. Did I spell sporked right? You did. Nice. Spork.com. Check it out. At Sporked on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, they're doing fun stuff. Go check it out. I'm hungry now. Well, everyone, that wraps it up for today. Thank you for listening to Trevor Talks Too Much. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, we got new episodes coming out every Tuesday, video version the following Monday over on YouTube. Um, leave a review, leave a comment, tweet at me, drop me a DM. Let me know what you want to see. If you're enjoying the solo episodes, please let me know. Um, if you want to see more stuff where I ask you what you think, uh, please let me know. I would love to continue tweeting at you and hearing what you all have to say because it's really good stuff, as we've seen here uh, with these tweets that I've read, especially the one that I didn't read on the show, but I'm going to mention now. Someone said you should try more butt stuff. That's what they would tell their younger selves, which is a weird thing to tell to your younger self. Depends on how old the younger self is. But I respect it. Um, but yeah, please leave a review, leave a comment, whatever. Uh, you know, go follow the socials. I'm over on the kitchen. Check that out. You know the drill. Um, and thanks for stopping by. It's been lovely. And I hope that you have a lovely week. Um, and think about what you would tell your younger self because we are rapidly approaching the invention of time travel. Um, so you might find yourself in that situation soon. Beware. <laughs>